I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Jamie Munoz, who runs Catalyst Integrators Marketplace, and she helps badass full-time integrators easily make their career transition to Fractional and supports them with community, coaching, and clients. Catalyst Integrator started three years ago and has seven full-time integrators. Jamie is based in Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome, Jamie. Thanks, Jay. So good to be here. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. We work with fractional executives to recreate their corporate income without the insane hours, building the business they want on their own terms. Jay Kingley, the co-founder and CEO of Maven, shares best practices along with tips and tricks on how you can build a robust pipeline to become fully booked with clients, start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Enjoy today's episode. Jamie, let's say I've had a 25-year career in operations. With my last two years serving as the COO of a $100 million distribution business unit of a $2 billion public company. I left corporate six months ago and decided to start a business as a fractional COO focused on EOS. I get introduced to you and I want to understand what Catalyst Integrators is all about. You've got a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch, go! Well, the first thing I would ask you after a big exit and career like that is, why aren't you on an island somewhere sipping a daiquiri, Jay? That's actually what I would ask you first. (laughs) I'm too young for that, Jamie. I got a lot of productive years ahead of me. There we go. Okay, so after the brief vacation you took, then you're ready to go. Really looking at the passion behind serving companies and serving leadership teams, taking that amazing career that you've had, your experiences, all of the the new badges and patches you have on your vest from all of the work that you've done over the years, you can provide that value to younger, more entrepreneurial companies to help them avoid some of those pitfalls, some of those things, those bumps in the road. You've got it. So you have this master book, this key that they want, and now you can 10x your impact by working with more than one company at a time. So rather than you being all in on one company, one visionary, you can now go and spread that wealth of knowledge that you have with multiple. That's the value of becoming a fractional integrator when you're ready to make the jump in your career. Now, before I make that jump and we get into the meat of our discussion, for the sake of our audience, I want to ask you to define some terms. And I want to start with what is EOS? EOS is the Entrepreneurial Operating System written about in the book Traction by Gina Wickman. So it is a, it's a background operating system that manages human energy in the background to allow you to work in your unique ability and just thrive on top of it. You serve integrators who focus on EOS. Who are they and how do they differ from EOS implementers? Oh, I love this question. Mm -hmm. Uh, They made the term so similar. We've got integrators and implementers, both living in this world of EOS with us. So as the system defines the the org chart, the accountability chart, we call it, is set with a visionary at the very top, the CEO, typically founder, owner, whoever that's sitting in that visionary box has the big vision for the company. That right hand second in command that works directly with them to make their vision come to reality is the integrator. So the integrator, COO, similar titles in that box. Down at the next level, we've got Typically, the leadership team, sometimes there's a COO or head of operations on that team. A lot of times, the integrator is in both seats. They're the integrator and the head of operations. So that's what makes a full-time role. That's why integrator is so easy to transition into the world of fractional when it's just so siloed in, like right onto that, that seat only. The implementer is your business coach that helps you implement 
the system EOS into your organization. EOS implementers are certified franchise franchisees of EOS Worldwide. So they specifically come in and have a set way that they work with you every 90 days or so. They put you on a journey to fully integrate EOS into your into your company and implement that system for you. So if I understand correctly, an implementer is a authorized franchisee of EOS. Yeah. And obviously EOS is very protective. Yes. Of their own intellectual property, particularly since I believe they were bought out by a private equity company. But an integrator is not controlled by EOS. And although integrators can support EOS, is it also fair to say that they can work with companies who are not interested in EOS, but still want to get equivalent benefits? Yes, 100%. The system is... An integrator is mandatory, an implementer is optional, is how that works. Um, and so depending on, you know, what you're wanting to run in your company, yes, 100%, you nailed it. So let's get back to you and Catalyst Integrators. So what motivated you to start the business? I tell people that I kind of fell into it on accident, to be honest, um, as an integrator and somebody who identifies as not a huge risk taker. Um, I was full time in my organization as an integrator. Uh, we were running EOS in our company for about four years. And um, the visionary decided to actually become an EOS implementer. And I was at a place where I'm like, we're not growing rapidly. We're not scaling really, really fast. We just need to kind of keep beating the drum. And I can do that in about a day a week. I kind of literally fell into it by saying my plan was to exit the company. But what I offered the visionary was I can stay for a bit and and keep things moving in the interim while you find somebody full time or you decide what you're going to do. And so it kind of worked that way. I went to find my first full time client. They were hiring full time integrator. And I got in there and I looked to my right at the table and there was this girl sitting next to me that she would have been a phenomenal integrator. She just needed some coaching and mentoring. So I was like, hey, raise my hand again, Uh, kind of working myself out of a job potentially, but I can come in and do this work with you guys just about a day a week or so, coach and mentor her, and then I can step out in the future. That's kind of how it was born for me. Uh, So I fell into it literally on accident. I feel like that was about um, 2018 was when, when that happened for me. So I had a different brand name at the time. Um, And then I was coaching and mentoring female integrators through a group called the Female Integrator Mastermind. Um, It's a group, you know, in the EOS community. And um, my first mentee that I had, Paulina, she was like, "Hmm, tell me more about this fractional work you're doing. This seems really interesting. Like you're making an impact. You're working more with more people than just one visionary. This sounds fun or crazy to some maybe. Mm Uh, who wants to work with multiple visionaries, you got to be ready for that. Um, And so just through our coaching and mentoring, she I was telling her about what I was doing, and she was interested in it. So I helped her fully transition, work through my clients, I had a waiting list, give her some of my clients in the backlog. And that's kind of how Catalyst was born. Um, We're technically three years old as Catalyst. We ran a couple of years previous to that under a different name. But started bringing on more people that want to live their ideal lives and um, exit their full-time career and make the jump to fractional. Or we've had a few that are fractional that were maybe solo and are tired of doing it by themselves. So they wanted a a group to join that's kind of like a a fun home base. Um, So that's kind of where it all came from. So so let's go back to how I opened up about me being that uh, early in, in the fractional journey after having left corporate. So what would be the benefits if I join Catalyst Integrators? And and also, I have to ask, do you accept men or is it female only? Yeah, so we currently have one male on the team, Jeremy. (laughs) Good old Jeremy. (laughs) Good old Jeremy. And and poor Jeremy, we all just went to a female mastermind uh, summit and he's come along So um, that was kind of a bummer. So this week, literally, we have our Catalyst team retreat. 
So everyone's coming to Scottsdale so that we can all get together and have fun together. Um, and Jeremy can be included in that. Uh, the, the guys are behind the scenes a lot. Our CFO is a male too. <laughs> but anyways, um, so um, in terms of benefits of joining our team, I love that question. So beyond the benefit of coming on board and like getting this amazing career transition coaching, we don't charge anything up front for that. So it's once you get clients, that's when we start being able to recoup some of those costs. Um, so really, it's the community. First and foremost, when I talk to people that are like, I just want clients, that's not really what we're about. That's part of it and one of the benefits, but we're here because we want to learn together, grow together, contribute. We have an active Slack channel where we're sending messages and asking questions and we provide our team with a mega database, like a knowledge base of all of the tools and materials and things we've created over the years. So it's also a massive benefit to our clients because we're not wasting time if they're like, oh, let's create this workshop this quarter. We've already got it. Here you go. Now we're saving the time it would take of the client's money to pour into that. We're like, hey, plug and play. We've got it done. What's next? So other benefits, we take the entire team to the EOS conference every year. So we get to go to that and, and meet in person and do that conference and learn together. Uh, we do all of the back office support for our team. So we're doing all of the invoicing and and um, AR, everything. Um, we do gifting. We have a gifting strategy that we execute. So we're doing client welcome gifts and graduation gifts and uh, sending different things throughout the year um, that are benefits that we, we provide. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. There's a two page document we have of all the benefits. Oh, we give mentors. So we mentors and coaches and things. We do peer mentorship. So I could go on and on, but oh, and strategic partnerships. So we have strategic partners um, that we work with that create additional revenue streams for our integrators. The idea is that we want that mailbox money kind of coming in when we're not doing a whole lot. That's our dream to have the pina colada on the beach like we were just talking about. So uh, we have strategic partnerships and alliances with key partners so that we can be compensated for some of those introductions and make some extra money uh, for not doing a whole lot other than referring our amazing partners. At the risk of dating myself, <laughs> you were reminding me of those old television infomercials like for the Ginsu knife. And that's not all. No. <laughs> oh, so I, <laughs> you can also get <laughs> so I, I, I love that um you've hit a number of pain points that fractionals have mm -hmm. but if i were going to pick one that comes up time and time again that i just want to explore a little bit more with you it is around client acquisition so if i am part of catalyst integrators are you getting me my clients? Am I, do I have to get my own clients? Is it a, a blend of how that works? Take me through what's got to be the number one pain point that people have and, and how you help them there. Yeah, definitely number one pain point and fear, especially when you've got these amazing leaders who are leaving a full-time paycheck, you know, into this world. It's, it's risky. So we want to make sure that we mitigate some of that a little bit. Um, so yes, we support our integrators on our team with clients. We have business development processes and ways that we go about working through our raving fans that we're creating, which are our clients and our network so that we can tap in and say, Hey, we've got capacity. Do you know anyone that could be of support? Um, we have multiple ways that we're, we're tapping in. We have a full-time business development person on our team. So she is dedicated solely to helping us find the right fit clients for us. The shift that I've seen in these past five years, so we're talking 2018 to now, 2018 me would be saying, please don't only interview me, potential client, talk to more than just me. Let's not interview from a pool of one. Fast forward today, me is like, oh, you're interviewing 15 other fractional integrators. That's cool. I hear back from you. That That's kind of, you're laughing and not like, that's literally what's been happening. Mm. So uh, 
the interesting part about that, again, is like tightening in, we're, we're aware and dialing in our processes, what we're looking for, who we're looking for. Um, the sad thing is, is that we're seeing clients kind of come back around to us um, and say, oh, I wish we would have started with you guys. Uh, we went the cheaper route or we went the quicker route. The person who is available right now and it shot us in the foot and it wasn't a right fit. We also realized that our leads are visionaries. They're entrepreneurs. They're high quick start. They're, you know, on to the next thing really fast. They want instant gratification. They want somebody right now. So it's valuing that process and understanding like where they're at in the journey and who do we have that can be a right fit to be successful longer term in that type of an engagement. Um, because what we're doing is we're coming in and helping grow this company, you know, and plugging into a leadership team that may have been burned in the past. And, you know, we're coming in in this way to really help support them go where they want to go. And it takes intention in the hiring process, you know, um, when it comes to that. So yes, finding the right fit clients with our right fit fractional integrators um, is really, really important to me. Everyone on our team values that as well. So we're doing a lot of work to like position all of our team members in the marketplace, promote them, share their accomplishments, do blog posts, get them into speaking engagements. And so that way we can, we can maximize this ability to kind of you know, bring more people in that are a fit for us. Most of our team is booked out. Once they become booked out, they're booked out pretty indefinitely. Um, if they have the the clients that are graduating because they're hiring a full time integrator in, we're still doing some coaching and mentoring, so we've got runway. But, anyways, I digress. I could tangent on that topic all day, but yeah, we help right. with the biz dev process, and everyone brings them within us so that we can find the right fit internally on our team or source them to somebody else. If we're not a fit. Abundance mindset. I'll send people out. Right. But just to clarify one little point. Yeah. I am sure you would be thrilled if an integrator part of your organization came to you and said, Jamie, I've got a client, whether it's for me or whether it's to pass on. And I'm, I'm guessing you can confirm that I would be incentivized to do that. But my question is, am I expected to do that? Expected from a sense of it's part of your daily, you need to go out and do this thing. No. Expected from a place of abundance and like, hey, I had this thing come in, here we go. Or hey, I've got some time, or this person reached out to me, that kind of stuff. Um I would say it's more of like a a support than an expectation kind of a thing. When we have a new fractional join the team, yes, it is expected that they help in the biz dev process. So we're coaching and we're tapping into different resources. They're coming onto calls with us as business development to be involved. And um, all of the integrators on our team do their own engagement scoping with their clients. So right, right. I'm not just assigning, oh, you come to us, Jay, you'll just get assigned someone and then told what to do. You come in and have the perspective and the buy-in on what it is that you're wanting to be a part of. Um, Perfect. All right. So there's a number of marketplaces that fractionals and fractional integrators can join. And I swear, you probably know this, new ones pop up almost literally every day. So what makes Catalyst Integrators different from all the other marketplaces that are out there? We probably use the most pink <laughs> and probably the most leopard print. I'm just kidding. Um, those probably actually are facts, but beyond that. Um, so... When it comes to Catalyst, we're really focused on EOS life. We want to be doing this work with people we love, doing what we love, time for their passions, making a difference, um, coming together, communicating, having fun, having a good time. We do like to have fun. We have Halloween parties and uh, we're going to have a Christmas party this week or a holiday party. And so it's important for us to have a place that's a fun home base a place that it's like, we have enough stuff we're dealing with, with all of our clients and stuff, we can come together and be professional and have a good time. And that's okay too. Um, most of the people on our team are on average working about three and a half days a week with clients. And what I'll say is about another half, half to full day with Catalyst, which means 
you're participating, you're contributing, you're um, coming to our meetings, you're coming to uh, community calls and listening to the speakers we bring in. So I would say really what makes us different, we continue to raise the bar. We want to make sure that we are focused and looking at the next biggest thing. Um, You know, for us, for this year ahead, honestly, it's really taking a a hard focus on self-work and inner work that we can carry with us as professionals. Because as you know, it's heavy to carry multiple clients and multiple companies and multiple issues. You know, you're not dealing with just just one, mm. even though you're making a bigger impact, you're multiplying potentially how much you're you're dealing with. We work with a lot of, of clients that are in therapy practices. And there's a reason why therapists can only work certain hours a week because it's heavy stuff. And if we're not doing our work to focus in and recharge and re-energize and keep that full, um, then that's when you burn burn out, you burn the batteries, you cannot you can't sustain as a fractional, I don't think people understand what's involved there that is unpaid hours of the day um, that you have to pour into yourself with um, in order to to be be strong as a fractional anything, really, I would assume. Um, so hopefully that kind of answers your question of why we're the best. And we like pink and leopard. You know, I've always been more of a magenta fan than pink, but we each have our flavors, right? I'll take it. Any show. <laughs> all right. Given that of all, well, given the experience that you've had with fractional integrators, what would you say are the biggest challenges facing these folks today? I would say the biggest challenge is that we've seen, I, I, I feel like the number was like 700%. I, he, I remember hearing 700% increase in fractionals in this past year that have come into the, to the, the scene. That makes it difficult on everybody. No matter if you've been doing it a while or you're brand new, I mean, or, or clients, now it's creating potential distrust pretty quickly um, from clients if they work with somebody who is not as experienced as they thought they were getting based on what the word fractional means. I think doing a job part time is is a little bit different than saying I can come in a fraction of the time, but give you way more benefit than somebody who's a little bit more junior, more green, it'll take them full time. And that's speaking on my own personal experience. Like when I was new as an integrator, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, you're figuring it out. Like, and and that's the thing. I would never come in as a fractional and be like figuring it out on the job with my clients in that way. Like, that's not what the expectation is there. So I think that that's the biggest challenge right now is that there's such a diverse range of people who've decided, I don't want to work full time anymore. So I'm going to become a fractional, whatever. And I think that's muddied some things a little bit and, and, and hurt things in a certain way. Not intentionally. I don't think anyone has done anything in a malicious way. Um, as long as they're not trying to misrepresent themselves as something that they're not. Um, but I can only control what we do at Catalyst. So that's the benefit that we provide is we are fully running on EOS. We know what we're talking about when it comes to that. We're not learning on the job. We're coming from lived experience of working with visionaries hand in hand um, and leading leadership teams and using the tools practically. There's a lot of other things, you know, the finding clients all feeds into that. Um, And then being solo, being by yourself, um, trying to do things and figure it out on your own. Sure, that's wonderful. You can totally do that and build on that. Um, You know, I have no doubt that we are we are a bridge, just like we're a bridge for our clients. I think Catalyst is a bridge for integrators to go from their full time safely into fractional, spread their wings, decide if in the future they want to create their own firm or go solo or go back to working full time. Whatever it is, I think that we're we're a catalyst for growth in people's careers and allowing our clients to get quality um, integrators to come into their companies and and serve them for whatever length of time they need. There is a big difference between your life's work and a hobby. And I do find particularly newer entrants to the fractional world 
sometimes get confused. Is th- Are they now on to the next stage of their life's work or is this just a hobby? They are very different. And I think a client wants to know which camp you're in. So I, I think that was a very great observation on your part. So what have you learned from doing Catalyst Integrators that you didn't know before you started it? A lot of things. <laughs> uh, I have never uh, built and grown my own fractional firm before. So every day feels like those learning experiences. Um, what I'll say is that's been huge is, is my identity and my full time as an integrator was the second in command and the COO stepping into this when I was solo and even now being the visionary of Catalyst is recognizing that I'm entrepreneurial. I am a visionary. I am the CEO of this company. Oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do now? What peer groups do I need? What support do I need? The level of coaching that I need is different. So understanding from a visionary's perspective has been the greatest, I'll say gift, and also challenge of all of this has been realizing that I am a visionary. And now I'm learning all these things that I can pour into and support my team with while they work with their visionaries. So that's been the biggest aha for me probably and continues to be is still a an ongoing journey every day so i'm an experienced professional but maybe i'm relatively new to being a fractional integrator what advice would you give me well i know the advice that i always give um it's that i would tell you to never work with an asshole i would say and and I got this advice from my one of my very first mentors when I transitioned into being fractional. Um, his name was Rick Wilson. And Rick said, he didn't say asshole. I say asshole. He said, don't work with crazy. He said, Jamie, do whatever you do, don't work with crazy. Because you're going to be desperate or you're going to want to like dip your toe in or you're going to want to help everybody or, you know, whatever your reasons are. If you've got red flags or know what your red flags are that you're looking for, be true to those and listen to that because it will bite you in the butt if you don't, and it will not go well. <laughs> when it comes to working with fractionals, Maven has a crystal clear, no asshole policy. So I completely <laughs> resonate the importance, particularly when you're young and you're starting your career, you pay your dues. You will have to do that. And that's probably a good thing to experience. But for those who I like to call our second act people, they're going on to the next stage of their career. We have earned the right to have the no asshole policy. So amen to that. Now, earlier, you alluded to the fact that there's no upfront cost to be part of mm-hmm. Catalyst Integrators. So talk a little bit about what does it cost to be part of your organization and how does that work? So with our team members that are transitioning from full-time, where we can, we create a transition plan because we never want the previous company to be left high and dry. It's not appropriate to give two weeks notice. So it could be maybe a 90 day or, or something appropriately sized. If you've got a wrap up rocks or goals or hand off things or hire somebody and replace yourself and onboard them. We want to do the right thing and not leave them high and dry. The other option is if they're ready for fractional, they've already got a first client in their full time that they're exiting because maybe that transition works really well for them to make that their first client. So what it looks like is time. It's it's Do you have, I usually ask, you know, do you have several months in savings or do you have another source of income from a spouse or a partner or whatever? Um, Because the investment up front is your time and you not getting a paycheck. Until our integrators have clients, they're not paying anything into us other than their time. So they're doing onboarding. uh, We have self-guided stuff and we have, we have mentoring and coaching and one-on-one time uh, reading. There's different things to watch and do. And then the business development component where they're involved in those activities. 
when it can transition really nicely and seamlessly is when we know and we can start really doing business development for that integrator within that two to three month time frame of them offboarding their full time and coming with us. So ideally, when they start with us, they've got a client or two to at least like get something going. In most cases, our integrators are making more money and working less by joining our team. And we're doing all of the invoicing, that kind of stuff. Um, we have the same rates right now at the moment for all of our clients. Um, so we're guaranteeing that they get an experienced integrator. We're not training people how to be integrators. We get people that come to us a lot of times saying, Hey, I read traction and I'd love to become an integrator. Can I become a fractional integrator on your team? The advice I'm going to always give like a broken record is like you said a minute ago, go pay your dues, get in there full time, get all of your battle wounds and scars and figure it out. And, and then let me know when you're a few months away from being ready in, in the next couple of years. It takes some time to see those different growth cycles. So anyways, back to your question. Um, it's the time that's required that we ask for and the dedication. Everyone on our team is all in with Catalyst is what I like to say. Um, so that way, if we're pouring in and we're giving our time and our resources and our training and everything that there's not, oh, I'm going to go like find my own clients and do this on the side. We want people that believe in us and our model and what we're also pouring in as a win-win relationship. So really, there is no dollar exchange upfront. It's really just taken from when we do client engagements. There's a percentage um, that's taken that pays for some of some of the benefits and um, and for the the clients and all of that stuff. So yeah. So in effect, your invoicing gross and you're paying me net. Yes. Since you're handling all the money. Yeah. Okay. Perfecto. All right. We're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit about Jamie. As a fractional executive, you work with us to help you recreate your corporate income without working the insane hours. Our fractional flywheel service focuses on how to price, package, and position your years of experience and expertise, create and refine your go-to-market strategy so it's effective and efficient, and then nail your execution. Working with us, you will build a robust pipeline to become fully booked start getting paid what you're worth, and eliminate your brute force marketing. Maven's unique fractional catalyst service for those serving startups and early stage companies gets you acting like a venture capitalist in managing your business and as an entrepreneur when working with your clients. Achieve financial security and reward with clients who want you to take charge, ask for forgiveness, not permission, in an environment without all the politics and bureaucracy you find in corporate. Email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to learn more. Welcome back. We're talking to Jamie Munoz, the CEO of Catalyst Integrators, focused on helping full-time integrators transition to fractional and support them with community coaching and clients. Jamie, let's find out a bit more about you. Let me start with share your biggest professional accomplishment. I would have to say my biggest professional accomplishment is the work that we've been doing with Catalyst, I think that, again, stumbling into this um, and it being kind of part of God and the universe moving me in the right direction, uh, looking at some of the numbers of the impact really has been remarkable. I mean, seeing the testimonials we get, the messages I get from our clients on just the impact it's made on their company. I mean, the fact that that they're growing at a certain rate and providing more value and, you know, out to the world. And then also the support of helping our internal catalyst team transition. And I get these messages and these cards and I talk to the team and hear about the impact it's made on their life, spending more time with their kids, you know, being able to really put work down at the end of the day and not be on call 24 seven, like they were when they were full time. Um, just, the ideal lives on both sides, our clients and our team members, really understanding that it's both sides, how we're, how we're helping both sides of, of um, the people that we're working with. I think that's pretty remarkable to me and um, has been really, really cool to see and be a part of. And I'm blessed to be growing this team and have amazing people joining me and believing in this too. I look back and I'm like, how the hell did people just 
listen to me and come and leave their full-time jobs to join what we're doing. It's incredible that, that they believed in it and, and are here and are doing the thing. So it's pretty cool. In the spirit of equal time, let's now explore what your biggest professional failure has been. And but more than the failures to understand what did you learn from it and how did it shape what you do today? So with failures, I, when I think about this question, I think about, man, like, I'm sure there has been a lot of them. I reflect on each and every one and like kind of pull from the experience of what worked, what didn't work. How would I do that differently next time and continue to grow from it? I would say, gosh, how do I find, is there a most recent one? Cause they're all the time. It's the, it's the perspective of how you look at it. Um, I haven't had anything big happen. That's, um, been so catastrophic other than what I'll say is me going through my understanding my path as a visionary, being in both the visionary and the integrator seat, and then meshing so much into one. I think that really having a strong second in command for me, if I would have probably done it a little bit sooner, we just hired somebody for my first full time integrator for me for Catalyst. I'm already feeling a sense of excitement, movement. I'm not so much driven on like, oh, we haven't grown. We haven't grown fast enough. We have to hit a certain dollar amount. That doesn't really bother me. I want to be able to help more people. So that's what really does it for me. So failure for me feels like um, if I haven't put the right people in the right seats in order for us to do things and be able to help, that feels like, oh, I could have done better there. Maybe we could consider that a failure. You know, I talk to multiple people every week that want to become fractional or clients that need help right now. And I need those benches of people to be able to support and help grow. And I can't carry it all. But that's what I would say. um, Biggest, most recent failure is just staying crystal clear on people strategy with intention, because it's going to take so much time to find the right person. And understanding that while it's good to self-reflect on what you can do better, sometimes it just isn't a fit and that's okay. I think realizing that and it not feeling like, man, I've got a mold to absolutely everybody to be that right fit. I probably went through at least 15 executive assistants (laughs) before you find the right one. And uh, that's the learning lessons is just being crystal clear on who you are, who you need, um, how you can do the things together and finding if if you're that right human match is the biggest thing I would say that takes time to. Any regrets? Not hiring an integrator sooner. <laughs> well, that being said, though, at the same time, I think we literally just found the right match. So I think timing plays into that. And I truly believe that when you're It's like an energy and an open readiness factor that being open and ready is when things are brought into your life. So it's kind of like when you're younger, when you're dating and you're like, I'm good with being just me right now, then that's when you find your partner and you're like, damn it, I wanted to be alone for a while. It's because you are putting off that energy that you're good and you know what you want and you know who you are. That's attractive to the right people. Um, So that's what I would say is just being clearer sooner on who I am and what I need to know who I want to attract to me. There's a reason that that old saying, the cobbler's children wear no shoes, still resonates today as much as it ever has. So what's next for you in Catalyst Integrators over the coming 12 months? Oh my gosh, that's such an exciting question. Uh, We're heading into our annual team retreat this week here in Scottsdale. So everybody's going to be coming out from all of their different, different cities to visit. Honestly, the, the theme that I've put together for 2024 for us is nourish to flourish. What do you need to do in order to nourish yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit, every aspect of you that you carry with you in order to flourish and to grow and to really step into that next level of greatness. Our Be the Catalyst ethos 
is is baking right now. I'll say we're we're baking through what it means to be the catalyst. How do we really take what we're doing and how we're leading and growing our leaders internally at Catalyst and spread that message and that teaching out into the world a little bit more? Um, increasing in the marketplace opportunities. You know, how do we make sure that while while we've got you know the right fit clients coming our way, how can we help? spread that out, you know, if we're booked or we don't have the capacity, what can we do to help do better matching, um, you know, use of assessments and things like that, and really helping us as a community get clear on what that means to not just throw somebody in, but also make sure that they're a good, a good fit for what the overall goals of the company are. Um, so yeah, that's some of the big fun stuff, onboarding a few new team members and getting up and running there. and. So what's the best way for our audience to contact you? You can email me. I literally live by my email. Uh, so it's Jamie Munoz at catalystintegrators.com. You can send a note through the contact form on the website if you want as well. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. If you if you LinkedIn message me, I'm going to reply and ask you to email me. So <laughs> well, we will put that information in our show notes for both the video and the podcast. Jamie, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcasts on all the major platforms and our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned. Thank you.